Should you work remote in South Carolina? With so many jobs becoming mostly or fully remote in the last couple of years, many people find that they can keep their job and live anywhere they want. Is South Carolina the right place for you? South Carolina has been consistently ranking in the top five most moved to states, but it's also making lists like the top five worst places to live recently on CNN. How can it be both of these things? Well, watch this video and you'll know the answers. I'm going to start with some of the biggest reasons people choose to work remote in South Carolina and then hit the reasons to avoid working remote in South Carolina. Probably the biggest reason people start to look at moving when they work remote is the cost of living differences around the United States. When you're looking to leave a place with high taxes, high housing costs, and a generally expensive cost of living, South Carolina often comes up as a place to consider. South Carolina offers a relatively low cost of living compared to many other states, which means your money will stretch further, especially when it comes to housing and everyday expenses. According to bestplaces.net, South Carolina scores an 89 in cost of living compared to a national average of 100. That means you'll spend 89 cents in South Carolina for what would cost a dollar on average. Now, in case you're watching me for the first time, I'm David Crum, and if you want to know everything there is to know about living in South Carolina, make sure you subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first one to learn about the current market here. And by the way, if you want one of our free guides, just check the description below, and that's also where all our contact information is. Whether you're moving in 9 or 90 days, feel free to give us a call, shoot us a text, send an email, or schedule a Zoom call if you'd like to talk to me personally, and I would be happy to help you make a smooth move. Now, the next big reason people move to South Carolina is the scenic beauty. The state is known for its beautiful beaches along the Atlantic Ocean. Charming coastal towns and picturesque landscapes make it an enjoyable place to live and work. The Atlantic Ocean is warm enough for swimming in the summer months and perfect for a dip on a hot day. While it isn't clear like the Caribbean, the surf is usually mild on the coast here, allowing children and adults to enjoy standing in the surf, swimming, and even maybe some body surfing. Mild climate is another reason people work remote from South Carolina. We have a generally mild climate with hot summers and mild winters, which can be particularly appealing to those who prefer to avoid extreme weather conditions. The state does vary somewhat with the low country and midlands, being hotter and generally avoiding snow and frozen temps. The upstate gets an average of three to five inches of snow a year over the course of the entire winter. Snow, if it comes, is usually in January or February, our coldest months. The trade-off for the lower part of the state is that summers will be hotter. Columbia, Myrtle Beach, Florence, and Charleston are usually five to 10 degrees warmer than Greenville and have more days over 90 degrees. Anecdotally, I find that the upstate and the coast usually have more breeze than the middle of the state like Columbia. A really big reason, and maybe this competes for the number one reason that people want to live in South Carolina, is outdoor activities. Many places offer water activities, both parasailing and jet skis are a blast if you get a chance to try those. Once you go inland, South Carolina is dotted with lakes that are large enough for boating, skiing, fishing, swimming, canoeing, and more. You can be outdoors in South Carolina all year round if you dress for the seasons. This can mean dressing for hot weather and carrying water in the summer or dressing in layers and wearing a coat in the winter. Southern hospitality leads people to move to the state. South Carolina is known for its friendly and welcoming atmosphere, which can make settling in and establishing connections easier for newcomers. I encourage visitors who are considering a move here to ask people they meet about living here. It's easy to strike up a conversation. You should expect people to wave when you pass them, probably say hello on the sidewalk if it's not real busy. People for the most part are friendly and happy to smile and speak. South Carolina has a growing tech industry and economy in general. General. People are moving to work here remote because South Carolina's technology sector is growing steadily and various cities like Charleston and Greenville are becoming tech hubs, offering potential networking and job opportunities. Now, if you're working remote, this may not matter, but some remote jobs still travel to the main office and occasionally finding one that's not too far away can be nice. Now, this isn't just South Carolina, but one of the reasons many people enjoy working remotely is a commute-free lifestyle. Working remotely allows you to skip the daily commute, saving time, money, and stress, giving you the flexibility to choose your ideal work environment. Living in South Carolina can also reduce your drive time for daily necessities entertainment, nature, and events. 
While traffic has increased in recent years for sure, we don't have the massive drive times that some metro areas experience. I've had people tell me they want to live within 90 minutes of downtown. That can get you halfway across the state in South Carolina, often into North Carolina or Georgia. In South Carolina, you can live in the country and still be 30 to 45 minutes from downtown in our largest cities. Next up is food. South Carolina's cuisine is influenced by Southern, Creole, and low country flavors, providing a unique and delicious dining experience. Near the beach, you can eat shrimp and fish that were caught that day, and it is great. If you haven't done it, I suggest finding a local place, preferably somewhere with paper towels on the table for when your hands get messy. Go in and get some seafood that you will remember. Across the state, South Carolinians love to eat. While we don't have Michelin-starred restaurants in South Carolina, you'll find an abundance of styles and flavors. At one point, Greenville had more dining choices per capita than any other U.S. city. Dining out in South Carolina can have a regional flair or an international one, it's your choice. If you're visiting a city with a great downtown like Greenville or Charleston, I recommend just going out for a walk before dinner, check out the city, and look at some menus. You can pick a place that's great this way, or if you want advice, just ask me or somebody that you bump into when you're walking through town. The next big reason I find people moving to South Carolina to work remote is our family-friendly environment. If you have a family or plan to start one, South Carolina offers good schools, family-oriented communities, plenty of recreational activities for children. Whether you choose to homeschool, private school, or public school, you can find the right education for your children here. The climate means your kids can get outside in every month of the year, even if it's more limited in January or February for some cold days. Our natural beauty lets children learn about the world around them, explore lakes, the ocean, waterfalls, zoos, and more. These have been some of the biggest reasons that people move to South Carolina with remote work jobs. Now, let's get to the reasons that you should avoid moving to South Carolina if you're looking for the best remote work location. The first is getting hired in your job. Many remote jobs say you can live anywhere, but they're advertising their jobs locally. While the economy in South Carolina is booming, we don't have a truly big metropolitan city like Chicago, Denver, or Houston. Jobs in specific fields may not be here, and you may need to look outside of South Carolina to find work if you have certain job types. They may allow you to live and work remote, but landing the job could be harder in South Carolina. Internet connectivity is another big issue for people working remote. Some rural areas in South Carolina may have limited access to high-speed internet, which could impact your ability to work efficiently from home. This is probably the number one thing people ask me when working remote. Who are the service providers and can we get high-speed internet access in this area? The answer is often yes, but not always, and you will need to make sure and check before choosing an area to live. The next big concern for remote workers moving to South Carolina is social isolation. Working remotely can be isolating, especially if you're new to the area and you don't have established social connections. The good news here is the Southern hospitality I mentioned earlier should make it easier to meet new people. That said, there will not be a string of people knocking on your door asking to be friends. So you'll need to get out and discover the city that you choose. Getting involved in hobbies that you like can be a great way to meet people with similar interests. Distractions at home can be a big problem for remote workers. Home environments can sometimes be distracting, making it challenging to maintain focus and productivity. If you're considering a move to work remotely, make sure that the home you choose will allow you to be able to do your job well. That may mean finding a bonus room over the garage that is separate from the main living space. You could have an office space or just using a spare bedroom. There can be many solutions, but it's important to consider this before you move. When you're working remote, another factor that takes more consideration is work-life balance. Without a clear separation between work and personal life, it can be challenging to maintain a healthy work-life balance. This is something I can relate to easily. I have an office, but I often work from home. It can be easy to get distracted by my kids or work that needs to be done around the house, but working from home can also make it easier to keep working when you should be off the clock. Knowing how to leave work at work can be more difficult for the remote worker. Going back to my previous point, having a clear workspace in your home can help make sure that you are getting your work done during work and having a personal life as well. South Carolina may not be the best place for your remote work because of professional development opportunities. Larger cities often offer more networking events, workshops, and personal development opportunities that may not be as readily available in smaller communities. 
Now, this will vary according to the size of city you choose to live in in South Carolina if you're here. Some individuals may find that remote work can limit their paths for advancement within their company or industry. If your career path relies on networking and meeting people in social settings, then choosing to work in a rural area or even in a city of South Carolina may not provide what you need. I'm going to put the next two reasons that remote work in South Carolina could be harmful together here because they're very related. You could have limited access to office resources without a nearby office for your company. And this can lead to increased expenses personally. Do you need to travel to your office for supplies or items that you can't get locally? If you're buying work items locally, are they being reimbursed? While the cost of living in South Carolina is generally lower, remote work might require you to invest in home office equipment and incur additional utility expenses. This can often be the case no matter where you choose to live, but can be a major part of choosing to work remotely. South Carolina can be an awesome place for remote workers and deserves to be on your list of places to consider if you're going to work remote. There are a variety of areas to live in South Carolina and each have pluses and minuses. I did a recent video on the five most moved to places in South Carolina. If that's helpful, check it out. Even that though doesn't touch on all the choices you have if you're moving to South Carolina. If you have more detailed questions about our state, I would be happy to help. You can ask in the comments, shoot me an email or text or even a call. I've lived in the low country, the Midlands and the upstate, and I have family around the state. If I can help you make a more informed decision, I would love to help. If you're working remote in South Carolina or have in the past, please leave us a comment and let people know what you love or hate about working remote. And remember, whether you're nine or 90 days away, I would love to hear from you and see how we can make your move to the Palmetto State a smooth one. Until then, I'm David Crum, and I look forward to showing you around my home state of South Carolina.